Every year, Tiger Championship wrestlers step into the ring. They hit each other, throw each other around, and punish one another till someone wins. But in reality, wrestlers are rarely ever hurt. MRL president John Keating, who heads up the production of the show, explains how this is possible while still keeping everyone safe. We have set practices uh, every weeknight for at least a month, and that's what we've been having out in the turf room. Surprisingly, the wrestlers practice the bulk of their moves using spare mattresses stacked up on the floor of the turf room. We've uh, had to use the mattresses a lot in the past, and that, that's been approved. Um, it's been the uh, easiest and uh, least hassle for everyone. During practices, attendance is taken and is required to be allowed to perform in the show. And before the show is even allowed to happen, all matches are reviewed. Myself and a, a couple other uh, former TCW um, members who have partaken uh, the event in the past um, watch the moves and see if the landing is okay, see if the grips, the holds are um, just right. According to Keating, that safety is very important to the producers as well as the wrestlers in the ring. It, it's more involving in making sure and assuring like use of safety because that's a, a real big issue when it comes to this because you know we can do all these moves and make it look great but if the safety is you know a little bit of an edgy subject you know we need to make sure that we handle that the right way. So while it may seem that the wrestlers are actually beating each other up in the ring, behind the scenes safety and practice come first. <laughs> For Access Own You, I'm Chris Brown. We see them just about everywhere we go. Billboards, signs, and newspapers. And we usually don't think about who made them. But one club at Olivet is actually responsible for making advertisements just like these. OMA, which stands for Olivet's Marketing Association, does just that. Basically what OMA is, it's um, hands-on marketing experience for marketing majors at Olivet. Um, we go to different businesses and we ask them if they need help in areas of marketing. OMA is a club that welcomes business majors, as well as those interested in graphic design and photography. The group is typically given the responsibility of creating advertisements for the company who hires them. I'm the first person that goes in and sits down and talks to them. And our first initial meeting is just going to be kind of getting to know them, getting to know their needs. What, or what are they looking for? Do they have a marketing director? Is probably our first big question. In fact, the group recently met with Lacey Erickson of Quality Concepts, a company that owns places like Jimmy John's and Hidden Cove. They discussed what the company was looking for in a marketing campaign. The group has many different jobs or positions that all have individual responsibilities. One of these, the Vice President of Advertising, is held by junior marketing major Emily Burns. Well, I am in charge of like maybe five people or something like that, and right now it's kind of dwindled down to like two or three. And really anybody who wants to help out, and like we're doing, we can do logos, we can do like pretty much all the ads, like we'll go over to the graphics lab and create the ad. Most professional businesses pay thousands of dollars for advertising firms to create their marketing plans, but OMA does all this for free for a different purpose. Like they give us a big giant hunk of money that we can use however we want and like they're not paying us as individuals to do the individual work but you know we're doing it for fun kind of and just to put it on our resume. So. so while you may have never even heard of OMA, many local businesses have been dramatically impacted by the work that they do. For Access and You, I'm Chris Brown. She is most commonly referred to as Connie the Lunch Lady. She is the cashier responsible for scanning cards and welcoming people to the cafeteria. But her job means much more to her than that, and is the reason why she is still working at Sodexo after many years. I've been here, it'll be 17 years in October. And I started, you know, I started when my little one was in first grade, and I wanted to have a job where I could have the summers off. <laughs> Connie started by working behind the scenes, but was quickly moved around on her tour of duty in the cafeteria. Um, Judy Coomer at the time was a ma was manager. She moved me over to the salad to the salad department, and I was there for a couple months. And then we branched off and started doing a deli. And she moved me to deli. And then uh, we had a girl at the front, like the cashier, who was going to be leaving. And so Judy came up and told me she wanted to move me to the front. Besides being a Renaissance woman in the cafeteria, Connie continually explained that she does it for the students. My job really isn't very, it isn't very hard, you know, it, it really isn't. I mean, I, 
I enjoy being up there. I enjoy being with you kids. Many students appreciate Connie for her friendliness and welcoming smile and wanted to let her know. She's so pleasant. She really cares about people. She refers to most of us by name. She knows She knows us. me as Meg, and that's a nickname. Kind of a big deal. She always looks at my card and tells me I've improved since freshman year. She's Thank always God. like, See, wow. I love Connie. Most people enjoy kind of coming in and seeing her and, and um, kind of like one of those old familiar faces. Uh, you look forward to seeing her. Connie is really sweet, and she's always uh, saying hello, and she calls me Al. Um, I love that. You know, she um, she says goodbye, and she's always smiling. Oh yeah, she knows my name. She give me a hug sometimes. You know, so <laughs> that's kind of cool. So yeah, you know, she you know she close to my heart. You know, you know. <laughs> so the next time you're hungry and looking for a place to scan your card, remember that there's a smiling face in the cafeteria waiting to welcome you. For Access So and You, I'm Chris Brown. Every morning you walk out of your old oak apartment and make your way down 102 toward campus. But before you can get there, you have to cross Main Street. You press the button at the crosswalk. You wait. You press the button again in frustration, but the cars keep coming and that evil red hand keeps telling you to stay. Such is the plight of many who live in old oak and oak run apartments. The wait is long and the road is dangerous, but the crossing is still heavily trafficked by students. Ben Coots is one of the students who had to cross Main Street every day to go to class and he had similar complaints. Like, pretty much every time I cross here, I get a little nervous because like, uh, it's a really, really busy intersection. I'm afraid I'll, I'll get hit by a truck every single time I cross over here. It's pretty crazy. Senior Kelly Rita Foster was actually hit while attempting to cross the intersection. I was able to meet with her and hear her story. I started riding my bike and this truck started inching forward and inching forward and I thought he was gonna try and go in front of me. So I put my brakes on and kind of just glided. And while I was gliding, um, he basically gunned it to try to get around me. And I swerved and he, his right bumper hit my right ankle. But if this intersection is dangerous, what can be done and who can do it? Some students were eager to share their opinion. They probably could do something. I'm sure that public safety or something to figure out, some way to make it a little bit safer. Cause it's not just all of that, it's the whole community that I'm sure that at the crosswalk, so. so I think it's really crucial to have a no right hand turn on red because anything else is just way too expensive um, and the problem needs to stop immediately because more and more students get you know close calls every day. Hearing responses and stories like these will hopefully raise awareness to all of that and the community and maybe in the near future something can be done to protect everyone who uses this crossing. For Access so and you, I'm Chris Brown. So while we don't know if the cafeteria expansion will make a big difference, all we can do is wait and watch as the face of Ludwig has changed, hopefully for the better. For Access O and You, I'm Chris Brown. So while you may have never even heard of OMA, many local businesses have been dramatically impacted by the work that they do. For Access O and You, I'm Chris Brown. So the next time you're hungry and looking for a place to scan your card, remember that there's a smiling face in the cafeteria waiting to welcome you. For Access O and You, I'm Chris Brown. Hearing responses and stories like these will hopefully raise awareness to all of that and the community. And maybe in the near future, something can be done to protect everyone who uses this crossing. For Access O and You, I'm Chris Brown. So while it may seem that the wrestlers are actually beating each other up in the ring, behind the scenes, safety and practice come first. For Access O and You, I'm Chris Brown.